Do you want to see how to make a simple card with a delightful little surprise for your recipient? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's get into it. This is going to be a pretty quick tutorial today. We are going to be making this card with a little surprise in it, or on it, I suppose. And I've started with a simple white card base. Then I am going to add some hexagons. I cut a bunch of these hexagon die cuts from the scrapbook.com nested hexagons. But if you don't have these dies or any hexagon dies, then I'm gonna recommend maybe like a diamond shape or like so you could cut some squares and then turn them on their side for a similar look. And I use the Roses Smooth Cardstock from scrapbook.com because it kind of did all the color matching for me. I wanted a variety of pinks, but I didn't want to have to go into my collection and think about which pinks looked good together. So that's kind of my favorite way of cheating through that. Let's get these hexagons on the card. I'm gonna kind of just mimic what I did with the card here off to the side, just to keep it simple. I think that hexagons are a fun way to add the look of movement or just any shape like this where you kind of um, stagger it because your eye will kind of flow along the different shapes there. And I have put adhesive on the back of all of my hexagons to make this really quick and then we're going to get to the surprise part of the card which some of you may have already predicted but I think it is a super simple and it's I found a very inexpensive option for it so I'm excited to share that with you. All right. So the next thing we're gonna to need to do is stamp. I know you're looking at the card going, well, there's no stamping on the card. That's because ultimately these gold hearts are actually scratch stickers. So you can scratch them off and it will reveal whatever you've stamped underneath. So I have some pink ones and I have some gold ones and I was able to purchase these at my local Dollar Tree. There are some options online. So for those of you who don't have a Dollar Tree or can't find one, I'm gonna link some other fun options that I can find out there. I'm taking the Word Fetty Sunny Days collection, and it has a lot of really small sentiments, which is perfect. So go in your stash and find anything with small sentiments that will be easy to cover up. It's basically my biggest suggestion for how to make that work. Don't worry about perfect stamping, but I find that if I use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, or any sort of pigment ink, but I find this one dries much better than a lot of pigment inks, I can usually get a great impression the first time with my stamp block, and since I'm trying to keep it simple, that's perfect. I just chose three sentiments, and I'm going to randomly put them on the card, but you could choose like five different sentiments for each of your hearts if you prefer. Um, be honest, it was mostly I had three stamp blocks on hand, and... I wanted to, I was so excited to share this fun product with you. All right, and you don't even have to really wait for it to dry because actually behind this sticker is a piece of plastic that will seal in your stamping. But you can wait a few seconds to let your ink dry so that you don't smudge anything underneath. Then we simply peel the stickers off. Um, they are a little bit tricky to get off the backer sheet I found, but if you're just gentle and you take your time, they do come off. So like here, the backer sheet's kind of coming with them. I think because of the price and the fun effect they give, it's kind of worth the little bit of hassle that is involved. Oh, can I get this guy off? Come on. Of course he's not going to work on here. There we go. Um, and I'm just kind of roughly centering it in each of the hexagons and covering up my sentiment, which again, I just roughly stamped in the center. If you're concerned about how it will turn out, I did make sure that I tested them. I shared it over on Instagram. I'll probably make a little quick short for YouTube as well. I don't wanna scratch the ones that I just put on the card just so that I can you know, send this card to a recipient. The one thing that I will kind of caution is that because there's, you know, you just need to scratch them off. If you send this through the mail, the kind of handling of the mail might accidentally scratch off 
some of the gold. And so what I would do is maybe slip this in like a Ziploc bag or you know they make those special cellophane bags for cards. Something like that might protect it, put a piece of card stock in between the card and the cellophane bag. And as you can see, I can cut right through the sticker, although I didn't do a perfect job of it, but the sticker, so um, I've just placed them down first. And then I'm just, I like to turn my card over when I do any trimming off the edges like this, rather than trying to like pre-cut any of the pieces ahead of time. And that's basically it. So when your recipient gets this card, it's not going to be clear to them. I think it's a really pretty card and they'll probably think that too, but then you're gonna need to have some kind of indication that they need to scratch it off. I know there's stamp sets out there that tell you, you know, scratch here or something like that. I'm actually gonna put a note on the inside about the scratch feature because I don't want it to interfere with the design. I think it's a really cool design. I guess that sounds kind of conceited of me, but um, I think that just adding a scratch me would kind of detract from it. I think it's cool like they would see the card and then find out, oh, there's this bonus element, come back to it and be able to scratch them off. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, scratch offs were kind of a rare thing and they were a little bit special because I think I mostly associated them with like, you know, scratcher tickets from the lottery. And so it was really special to be able to scratch something off. I would always get very excited when you got the opportunity to do that. So hopefully this idea brings a little bit of fun and whimsy, whether you give this to an adult or a child. If you like this video, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.